a Star Wars bar, a restaurant from a triple Michelin star chef, and a frozen dinner show featuring Oaken. There is a lot to see when it comes to the food on Disney's newest cruise ship, the Disney Wish. So let's dive in. All right, I've made it to Worlds of Marvel, which is one of the three rotational dining options. Oh, I was gonna tell you about it, but I'll let them. Hi, I'm Scott Lang. Um, but you might know me as Ant-Man. And I am Hope Van Dyne, the Wasp. Look, before we start, let me address the elephant in the room. I've heard a lot of chatter out there asking why I didn't shrink down, go in, and uh, kill Thanos in a really creative way. First of all, gross. Secondly, it's much more complicated than that. Allow me to explain. If only we had the time. Anyway, tonight, through the power of quantum science, we will show you how together we can change the world. Yeah, now look, don't worry kids, quantum science sounds overwhelming, but trust me, it is. Sorry, I couldn't finish my thought, but everyone knows it's rude to talk over people, especially when it's Paul Rudd. I, um, I'm really excited about this restaurant. It is one of their immersive concepts set, obviously, in the world of Marvel. They've got quantum cores on the table. This is what they use to help pin particles shrink and grow things, like what Ant-Man uses. Um, and on the screens around us, the Ant-Man and the Wasp have already shown up, and I would, I would guess they're not the only ones we're going to see tonight. So uh, the menu here is inspired by worldly cuisines, but Marvel world. So there's a Wakandan dish, there's a Sokovian dish. Um, I'm pretty excited to try things out. All right, for an entree, I went with the pork chop. It has greens on the side, pomegranate seeds, and what the menu says it's a rice pilau, which is probably supposed to be pilaf, but maybe that's just what they call rice and rice pilaf in Wakanda. I don't know. So I got some of the pork with the pomegranate seeds and a little bit of sauce. What I'm really liking about it is the way the pomegranate seeds go with the pork. I've never had like pomegranate and meat, I don't think, except maybe like, like, no, I don't think I've ever had any pomegranate with meat. It's really good here because the meat's got like, you know, really nice savory flavor profile. And then pomegranate is sweet and a little bit acidic and it pairs really nicely. Um, the sauce is kind of mild. Honestly, the biggest flavor I was getting when I took that bite was from the pomegranate altogether. And as for the rice, pilau slash laf. It's okay. It's definitely, like I would eat all of it. It's, it's good, I like it. It's just, um, it kind of reminds me of like the rice peel off you might find like on the buffet at like Tusker House yes, has similar like rice dishes to this and um, it's good. There's nothing special. I wouldn't order this dish just for the rice peel off. The food was pretty good here at Worlds of Marvel. I wasn't like the hugest fan of it. None of it was like, oh my gosh, I'm dreaming about it. I actually really liked the marbled bread and the red pepper like sauce that went with it. That was maybe my favorite thing. Otherwise, everything was good. It wasn't great, but it was good. Nothing was that bad either. Um, it just wasn't very exciting. I liked the theme. Show-wise, the show itself was pretty cool. I feel like it was a little shorter than I was expecting, and also the character appearances at the end are a bit over underwhelming because they do kind of just stroll through the restaurant for about 20 seconds. Um, but it's still really cool to see Ant Man and the Wasp. It's really cool to see the superheroes are like helping the ship because it's all set here on the Wish, um, the entire show. So you get to see like Captain Marvel arrive on the deck of the Wish to help out. You get to see. Um, Cap, Cap, or Anthony Mackie as Sam, as Captain America, um, arrive on the ship, so it's, it's really cool. The bayou is located on deck three. It is, as I said, Princess and the Frog theme. You've got these beautiful flowers in the ceiling, and there is a little stage over there so that people can uh, perform. They'll, they'll have different performances on different nights. There is a lengthy bar. There are several tables, lounge-style seating, and um, even like a bar behind the bar. And it's actually absolutely gorgeous in here. I've at least walked by most of the lounges, and I think this one is really breathtaking when you see it for the first time. Especially these tile work booths with the lily light. That's beautiful. I want this in my house. Fry Bucket and Cassie are in it. They could come if they wanted to my home. <laughs> yeah, she's charging something out of my pocket. 
Look, the tables even have little jars of fireflies. They're not real fireflies. They're little like fairy lights, but it's so cute. It's so Princess and the Frog. Why does my kitchen not look like this? So for my drink, I got the absinthe frappe, which is not really a frappe, but I'm interested. There are some very unique cocktails on this menu. It was kind of hard to choose because they all seem a little bit like I could not like them, but I think this one I'll like. It's made with uh, Pernod absinthe, any set, a bit of vanilla cream soda. So it sounds pretty good to me, and it's a very pretty drink too. And of course, we have an order of beignets on the way as well. Cheers! Ooh, I like that. You can definitely taste the absinthe, but it's mellowed out a lot by the cream soda. It's a very heavy feeling in like your nose. I don't think this cocktail is for everyone, although reading the other cocktails on the menu, I think they go for a more unique spin here. Doesn't mean you can't order something you're more familiar with. Uh, but this is tasty. It's probably not my favorite drink I've had thus far, but I don't know, we'll have to recap at the end. Alright, beignet time. This beignet definitely isn't like super warm, soft, and fresh. It's hard to choose. It's really ready because it's not super like soft. No, it's been like, I took pictures of it, so it's been sitting for a bit, but there's also a lot of people in here. It wouldn't surprise me if the beignets are kind of like cranking out. They only had orders of three left, but usually they have orders of one, two, or the Mama Odi special, which comes with different dipping sauces. The chocolate dipping sauce with this tastes a lot like Hershey's chocolate syrup that you put on your ice cream, and I would not dip my beignet back in it. Future Quincy here, hey. I just got word that the chocolate sauce at Bayou is a lot better today. It tastes a lot like melted chocolate. So we had a little bit of an inconsistent experience since ours is more like Hershey's syrup. Um, just something to keep in mind. If you think about Mickey beignets and that's what you want out of this, you'll be sad. That's what happened to me. But it's not a terrible beignet. It's still a beignet. It's still fried dough. So. So Marceline Market is a buffet-style restaurant that serves breakfast and lunch. Now for our cruise, it is not serving dinner, but in the future, maybe on longer cruises, depending on when you go, Marceline Market will convert to a table service restaurant for dinner, but that's just not happening right now. Now, of course, Marceline Market is named after Marceline, Missouri, which is Walt Disney's childhood hometown. And the food here is inspired by international cuisines from all over the world. Um, ten, there's 10 food stations in total, for each theme to a Disney animated film. And you'll find pretty much every, something for everybody here. The buffet is huge, so you'll find more adventure seats, more comfy, safe eats. And my favorite part, there's a coffee bar. I walked right in there, I heard of a strain of pulling espresso shots, and I was like, oh, yes. I was so excited. Because I haven't had a lot of coffee since I've been on here because I've been running around. And you know what I need? Coffee, all the time. So I'm definitely grabbing some of that before I head out of the market. I went pretty classic for breakfast with just some breakfast potatoes, some creamy eggs, bacon, and this nice, beautiful tomato. And I, I think this is a fair thing to do because what I always say is that I actually never said this, but hypothetically. Common food is harder to do well because everybody has a baseline. Whereas like at Ashante last night, I was tasting flavors I never tasted before, so there wasn't much for me to compare, as, compare it to. But this, it's gonna have to, it's gonna have to be good to wow me, so we'll see. Home fry. Those are really good. They're oily, they're salted like exactly the right amount, and they're cooked well. It's kind of hard to do breakfast potatoes badly, but these are, these are great. Um, I wouldn't surprise me if they're my favorite thing on the plate. The eggs are good. Um, they are the texture of old made scrambled eggs. However, they don't have the heat lamp vibe that those eggs get sometimes. I don't know if they're changing them out more often or what, but it's a uh, it's so they're they're you know they're buffet eggs, but they're good. And last but certainly not least, the bacon. This is my loser. I like bacon. I like really chewy bacon. Which I know is a popular opinion, but I would say this is not, this is not chewy bacon, but it's not crunchy bacon either. It's chewy, but in a bad way. It's like it's trying to be trying to be crunchy, but it ended up chewy, and the overall result was bad. It's my bacon. I wish it were. I wish it either were more crunchy or more chewy. Lunchtime. 
All right, located up here on the main pool deck is Mickey and Friends Festival of Foods. This is sort of a food court style where there are a bunch of different stations where you can try different things. And two of the stations are actually new to Disney Cruise Line. Other ones you can find on other ships. Right as you head into Festival of Foods, you'll spot Mickey's Smokestack Barbecue. This is one of the two new concepts on the Wish and of course has barbecue. There's an extensive condiment station as well with that barbecue, including a ton of sauces. Barbecue hot sauce, barbecue mustard sauce, signature barbecue sauce. I'm sure that one of those is passable. Maybe not vinegary enough, like I like it. Next door, we have Daisy's Pizza Pies, and that, as you would imagine, pizza. Next up is, I think, where we're gonna stop, Donald's Cantina. This is the other new concept to The Wish. It is um, a Mexican food concept built around bowl, kind of like Chipotle or Quidoba. So I am definitely going to be having this, but before that, I have to do something really important. I need an appetizer. So I'm just going around to the other side of the pool to get my appetizer because I mean, I can't eat without like a little, you know, an amuse bouche. Something, a nice thing to wet the palate. You know what I mean? My appetizer. And yes, it is ice cream. Unlimited ice cream is like the whole reason you go on a cruise. All right, Donald's Cantina is serving me right. This is based, literally, it was like the closest thing to Chipotle I've ever seen in my life. The rice on the base is a poblano cilantro rice. It's then got black beans. I went for the fajita style beef. For toppings, I have lettuce, corn salsa, cheese, and sour cream. It looks really good. I'm really just gonna be comparing this to Chipotle. I think we can all understand that. And I thought a bug bit me. There's no bugs at sea, just lobsters. Um, and just like Chipotle, you can get a bowl like I did, or you can get burritos or tacos. So you kind of get your choice. Let's see how it tastes. It tastes a lot like Chipotle, which I'm not complaining because I love Chipotle bowls. But one thing that's different for me is that at Chipotle, I really like salsa verde, and this didn't come with it. Although, I missed the toppings bar. Am I an amateur? All right, let's try with the obvious improvement of salsa verde. I don't know, if you're me, probably not everybody, but I really like salsa verde. As expected, that does take it a little bit closer to, to Chipotle style, but the salsa verde is different. It's still good, I actually really like this. If you like like Tex-Mex bowls, I have Donald's Cantina. I also have here a slice of cheese pizza to try. Pizza cheers. Not my favorite. The crust is pretty chewy, but like you can tell it's super crunchy on the back, which there can be good pizza with crust that like that's like that, but I'm not really tasting four cheeses here. It's very thin, the layer of cheese. I get extra cheese when I order pizza, so this is just especially little cheese. No, oh, this is not my favorite. I would say maybe swing for the barbecue or the the two new concepts, the barbecue or Donald's, uh, what is it called, Donald's Cantina, before you swing for the pizza or the grill. All right, snow cone time. This is up at Wheezy's Freezy's, which is in the Toy Story Pool District and they've got a lot of like frozen cocktails and stuff like that, but they also have snow cones. They literally have a whole snow cone machine. I love snow cones. Um, so this is gonna be just, you know, shaved ice with, I got pineapple and coconut, but they have a bunch of different flavors that you can choose from, and there are gummy bears in it. I'm thrilled. It's also hot, perfect time for a snow cone. Snow cone cheers. Mm. I'll fill them on my pan. Brain freeze. That's great. It's a snow cone. It's made with bone and syrups. I got pineapple and coconuts making like a pina colada thing happen. And I just ate a pineapple gummy bear for good measure, so I'm happy. Oh, that's really good. Mm -hmm. It's summertime when we're on the cruise. It's yes. hot. Mm -hmm. we're, and we've been in the sun a long time, as evidenced yes. by the growing sunburn on my body. So a snow cone is really hitting the spot. And there are gummy bears. Yeah, I think the gummy bears are an added bonus. Yeah. The Cove Bar has a pretty, a pr pretty impressive cocktail list. Including, if you look closely, the Infinity Swirl, which is made with Dole Whip. So that's pretty amazing. But lots of great cocktails. I see several on here that I'd want to try. The Mango Tajin, oh, as a pop spritz? Yes, lots of bubbles. Perfect for sitting in the infinity pool. I'm looking out over literally the open sea. And the lounge isn't the only adults only spot. If you head around, there is Cove Cafe. So Cove Cafe is also located in the adults only area. It is a more like coffee centric spot. Plus they do have alcohol as well with a bar. Um, so this is a really cozy place to hang out. It's pretty small and it has a nice Moana theme to it. And of course, when is the lookout over the ocean? Where better to go when I deserve a sweet treat than Joyful Sweets, which is an inside out themed 
sweet shop in here. They've got a bunch of like pastries and other types of the desserts, plus gelato and ice cream, over 40 flavors. The room, as you can see, is decorated to look like the, what is it called, the Mind Center? What is it called? I've decided on what I'm getting. No spoilers, but I'm distracted right now looking at the cool theming in here. Look at Disgust. She is so fabulous. And if you come back here, you'll find some prepackaged snacks. Great to bring back to your room and stuff. And uh, this cute little memory orb machine that has a randomly assorted character inside. How cute. I made my choice of joyful sweets and I went with one of their signature treats. This is a memory orb and this is the joy orb. And it's chocolate, but it's, it's rumored to have some secrets hidden inside. And we get to crack it open with this spoon. I think it's a little melty. So I didn't get a super satisfying crack on it because my chocolate was a little melty after taking pictures of it, but it was still fun to open it up. I think a kid would really like it because he gets to write chocolate, chocolate. And then also the insides, this is like Kid Candy Central. It's like gummy bears. There's M&Ms and Skittles, which I think is something that shouldn't be allowed legally. There's mushrooms. No, there's marshmallows. It's a really good chocolate. It's like, I was expecting it to be that sort of like flavorless chocolate that you find in a lot of like candy and and confections like this, but it's actually a really rich, um, heavier chocolate with a lot of really good flavor and like nuttiness to it. And then the insides taste like when you take a bite and it's mushroom gummies, MMs, and Skittles. <laughs> what is happening? Right now we're in the third Beauty and the Beast drop restaurant, which is Palo Steakhouse. Now Palo is a brand that you might recognize if you've been on Disney Cruises before. This is the first one branded steakhouse, and it is themed to Cogsworth. It is a beautiful restaurant. I hear the food is amazing. That's young new. So like all Chante, this restaurant starts its meal with an amuse-bouche. This is a soft potato gnocchi with Parmesan cheese, and it's in a creamy porcini mushroom yeah. sauce. Yeah, thank you. I always forget how do you find it in menu if you don't know? I love gnocchi. It's, a, it's <laughs> like a thick potato area, noodle, kind of. Like, oh, um, well, and that this that one is cooked so very, very potatoey. So, and I can definitely taste the really good Parmesan cheese. I love porcini mushroom. It all comes together very well. It's doing the, it's a, it's amusing my mouth, which is what that's supposed to do. All right, here is Paolo's bread service. There are three different little bread servings here. Let's see how they taste. Cassie's eating it too. She just chose me. Is it delicious? I'm not prepared to answer that on camera. So for my appetizer, I went with the sliced herbed yellowfin tuna, which is served with an apple mostarda, biscotti di regina, and a limoncello white pear balsamic. And then this is actually caramelized uh, orange zest. And uh, my waitress told me that the best way to eat the tuna is to get a little bit of everything. So that's what I'm gonna do. But look at that tuna, it's so pretty. Look, it, it came out of there. Okay, so I ate it all at once. At first I was like, man, the apple mustard kind of takes it all over. But that was literally only first taste because then it went through like a million flavors really fast. Um, and there was like sweetness from the caramelized onion zest and like crunchiness from the biscotti. And then the tuna is like amazingly, it's, a, it's rare tuna, it's amazingly sliced. The texture is amazing and it goes so well. And then the, um, the dressing, the sauce with it too, kind of like ties it all together because a little bit of that is on everything. It makes me think of in Willy Wonka, when she chews the Thanksgiving gum and she's like going through it and she's like, oh, mashed potatoes, now it's turkey. That's what this is like. So for my entree, I went with one of the pasta options. This is the soft potato gnocchi. It's got roasted tomatoes, pine nuts, and basil pesto in a Prosecco wine sauce. And the Prosecco wine sauce is what really sold me here. So it looks amazing. It's so pretty. It's very good. The flavor is pretty light and delicate. I was expecting it to be a really strong aromatic flavor with the pesto and like the actual pine nuts on the dish, but it's actually a very light flavor, which I wish it were a little stronger. However, I will say, um, because it's gnocchi, it kind of makes it less of a, a heavy dish. Um, it's not my favorite gnocchi I've ever had, but I am enjoying the pesto. I'm enjoying the pine nuts. Um, and obviously the gnocchi is very well cooked. It's just flavors wise. It's a little, it, it, it could do more. Is yours doing more? Mine's doing a lot. <laughs> 
So I got the Agnolotti. It's butternut squash, buffalo mozzarella, amaretti, oh, yeah. sage brown butter, and basil. It is very, very good. I think the part that is selling it for me is the sage brown butter. Mm. It's very sweet. It's very, very good. I would definitely get it again. So for dessert, I went with the amaretto souffle. It comes with uh, hazelnut gelato and a vanilla anglaise, and it looks very beautiful. So let's see how it tastes. This is very good. It's one of my favorite sweet things that I've had on the shit. And it's a, um, it's got a lot of, like the souffle itself is totally packed with those like amaretto flavors. The hazelnut souffle pairs perfectly. And then I was kind of worried that with the uh, vanilla anglaise, it was going to be a little too sweet, but it's not, it's warm and cold together, which is like how you make a peak dessert in my opinion. Um, it melts in your mouth. Big fan. My favorite thing I ate at Palo was either the souffle, which is in my top things I've eaten on the whole cruise, the Amaretto, sou Amaretto souffle, or fry bucket agnolotti, because that was good. Um, I wish I would have ordered that. I was super jealous of it. Um, and I, I enjoyed the tuna. I thought the minoki was good. It wasn't anything great. I wouldn't order it again, honestly, just because it didn't have enough flavor. Um, but those two, I loved. Hello overall, I think if you're choosing between the two adult dining options, which are both an upcharge, so you might want to do both, but you might only be able to do one, um, or depending on the length of your cruise, you might only be able to do one. I I think you really have to decide like what's best for your party. Hello Steakhouse is great if you love a steakhouse. It's going to be more accessible, the food is going to be more familiar, whereas Enchante is going to, the menu is going to change a lot more. It's very chef-centric, so like we had a tasting menu from the chef. It's very experimental. Um, gastronomic so like I drink tomato water you know and I personally like Don Chante a little bit better but I like an extremely fancy restaurant over a fancy steakhouse so it really does depend on what you want for your party to, to be able to warrant that upcharge the first thing you'll see as you walk up is the sign for the rose which is the lounge here and of course it's got the magic rose that's so cool and the magic mirror. Aww. So the Rose has a really interesting menu, including a cocktail called the Rose, which is $50. I didn't swing for that one, but I did swing for another of the featured, the Mrs. T. This is Selvaray White Belvedere Pear and Ginger, Peak Passion Fruit Green Tea, and Wet Imperial Rosé. And it is a beautiful drink that comes in a little teacup. Maybe the cutest thing I've seen all day. Cheers! <laughs> Ooh, that's really good. It's, you can definitely taste the vodka, and I'm a vodka drinker, so I'm a fan of it. It also has a lot of very like floral things going on. I can really taste the green tea. It honestly reminds me of those bottled Lipton green teas that you can get in vending machines that are so good for some reason. Um, super refreshing. Very easy to drink, I think. Potentially dangerous. I'll report back in about 20 minutes and tell you if I was right. The adult dining options on the Wish have their own little sections right off of the um, elevators on deck 11. And it's going to be Enchanté by Chef Arnaud Lavant. He is a triple Michelin starred chef and has a big focus on seafood. I am super excited. The restaurant looks beautiful. The food looks amazing. And there's like a sommelier here. It's I'm excited. This is going to be a great meal. Uh, this one is themed to Lumiere. We started out our meal in the lounge, so we're beginning with the champagne, which a sommelier came and explained to us, and a few canapes. So very, very beautiful meal so far, and we haven't even really started. Cheers. So the menu here at um, La Chante is very, there's, there, it's more chef focused. There are two different tasting menus. There's one called the collection, which is nine courses, and one called the passion, which is five courses. I'm gonna try out the passion. If you're here, you can try out the collection, which is the chef's menu. Uh, no matter what you order, you can order a la carte as well, but you do get an amuse-bouche, uh, which is what I've got right here right now. And we were told to gently, gently crack it open. He stressed gently. I'm not sure what happens if you don't, but I'm gonna be gentle because it seemed important. I think I did it too hard. <laughs> this is very good. It is creamy, it's herby. Um, there's like a touch of sweetness to it and then also a touch of like citrusy acidity, which makes it like extremely well balanced. And then all of the like actual 
like substance of the dish is really soft. It's like a almost polenta texture, whereas you have like a little bit of a crunch from the puff pastry. Um, I'm a big fan. I would eat this every day, I think. The start of the passion course, along with that amuse-bouche, we also got this beautiful uh, sourdough bread, which our Remy, our waiter, called one of the best breads in the whole world, uh, along with this butter snail uh, full of butter, as butter snails are, with some fancy salt and pepper. And then the start of my passion courses are, is the, the uh, tomato confit in butter, and it is cooked for 12 hours in that butter, so uh, it smells amazing. I'm really excited about it. There is a tomato vinaigrette complete with homemade focaccia. On this side, we've got another uh, presentation of tomato with a little bit of ratatouille on top. And then finally, we have tomato water complete with tomato ice cubes made from the tomato water so it doesn't water it down. All right, so I'm trying the complete first. It's like the most butteriest tomato of the entire world ever. Um, it's got a bunch of like really interesting herby flavors in the toppings on it, but the tomato is like, it's like soft and very juicy and it comes off in a way where it's like, you know, usually a tomato, you're like, this is a vegetable. This almost comes off kind of fruity because it is so juicy. And then with it being so soaked in butter, it's very rich. Mm. And the chef recommends you start with the tomato confit and move on to the tomato vinaigrette, which is exactly what I'm gonna do. Mm. That's really good. That reminds me of like a really good focaccia when you drag it through olive oil and balsamic vinegar, but with like a tomatoey twist to it. So it's got that like kind of snappy acidity from the vinegar and um, the bread soaks it all up really well. It's a very dense focaccia. There's not a lot of air bubbles, which means it can really soak up that vinaigrette. And then lastly, we have this kind of soft tomato with the ratatouille on top. That one's very easy. It has like a mousse texture to it. Um, and the little bite that I had had part of the ratatouille in it, which gave it like a little bit of an added sort of like snappiness to the texture, which is good because the mousse is kind of, you know, it's really soft. Um, that one has the most, I'd say, robust flavor of the three that I've tried. I think my favorite of the actual like food and not tomato water drink parts of this tomato dish is gonna be the vinaigrette because it is very, very good. And now, the moment I've been waiting for, tomato water with tomato ice cubes. I've never had tomato water. It smells really good. It is really good. Should I be making this in my house? This is really good. It tastes like, um, it tastes like the sweet aftertaste of a tomato in water. Like, so it tastes like a like lightly flavored water with the sweet aftertaste of a tomato. Um, actually at La Cava del Tequila in Epcot, there's a tomato uh, margarita. And this is like the water version of that, if that makes any sense at all, where you expect it to be tomatoey and weird to be in a water, but it's actually very, it's like, okay. Yeah, it's so good, <laughs> chef. <laughs> so did you enjoy it? Yes, it's very good. I'm talking about how good the tomato water is. So my next course on the passion menu is actually what something that's not typically on the menu. Usually they have something called a John Dory, which is another fish dish. But this one is actually a stone crab based dish. At the bottom, you've got a tartlet, that big pile of stone crab in the middle, and then on top of the lobster langoustine with a vermouth sauce. So I'm very interested. This sounds like it's gonna have a lot of big flavors to it. All right, I'm trying it out. That was not what I was expecting. Like the stone crab was, but the tartlet was crunchier and then the the mango sit on top like really does have the texture of jello, which I don't hate. It's just that sometimes my mouth was like, are we eating dessert? And then I tasted fish. Um, and I actually really like it. Uh, the sauce is what makes it in my opinion, which is great because the chef brought extra sauce. Um, but I don't know, I've been in a, in a stone crab mood lately. So far everything I've had has had very complex flavors and texture compositions. So if that's not your jam, if when you start getting into more textures and stuff like that, then um, you might have a little more challenge at Enchante. It is a rather fancy restaurant with fancier flavors, but I'm enjoying everything so far. All right, so next course, we've got the halibut. And this is a beautiful fish that's actually glazed with a caramelized um, fish bone broth situation. It looks amazing, it smells amazing. On the side, it's got a couple of different onions, including uh, this up here, which is an onion gratin, and then some pearl onions as well. Uh, it looks very, very good. I'm excited to try it. I'm a big fish person, and you can see on the side of it, it's super white and flaky looking. The halibut has been seared on only one side, which is giving it this like amazing like crust to it that has like a nice black pepper. Um, 
kind of in, like built into it. And then I was kind of, you know, the words fishbone glaze scared me, but it's amazing. It tastes so good. It's on the saltier side, it's making the fish have like a very robust and filling flavor. Um, and the sauce on top is just like bringing the whole thing together. Very good. Maybe, maybe my favorite thing I've tried so far. But hard to say. Everything's great. My next course here is the pigeon course. And as you can see, this is a very pretty dish. It looks very hearty. Um, inside the pastry here, you've got the piece of pigeon. There's foie gras, which um, our waiter Remy said will get all melty and nice and delicious. There's also a tomato and some spinach in there as well. It looks very, very good. Um, and then on the side, it's kind of just a collection of different veggies. And of course, as we've seen, Chef Arnaud loves the sauce and it looks amazing. This tastes like the fanciest sandwich in the world. It's surrounded with bread, there's spinach on it, there's a tomato on it, so I'm getting like, like BLT vibes. And then there's also like these beautiful, like beautiful prosciutto, beautiful foie gras, and then beautiful pigeon. And all together, it's really tasting like a, a really fancy sandwich and I'm into it. As you can probably tell, we had a really great dinner at Enchante. Um, we spent many hours there because it was so good. Chef Arnaud was here on the cruise. He came and greeted us. He personally poured many of the sauces. A three-star Michelin chef photobombed me while I was talking to you guys. It was an amazing dinner. We had amazing wine from a sommelier. I think my favorite thing I ate was the halibut. I was a big fan of the tomato water. I know that that's a weird one, but I really like the tomato water. I definitely like that. If you like fine dining, I think you'll like Enchante. It's not the most successful restaurant. If you're not into tiny plates of tiny food and gastronomy, you might not like it. You might want to head over to Palo Steakhouse, but if you do want to very fine dining experience in a beautiful restaurant, then you might want to consider booking Enchante. So, first things first on Castaway Key is to eat something because I haven't eaten all day. To do so, I'm headed to Cookies Barbecue. And this is barbecue like the grill, not the meat. They've got burgers and hot dogs and things like that. And uh, I'm hungry and it's all open air and I see Lay's chips and I want some kind of frozen drink. And that's the current status. For my lunch at Cookies, I got a variety of salads, not the healthy kind, the fun kind, and a barbecue uh, sandwich. So I've got a pasta salad here that looks very yummy. I love pasta salad. We've got a roasted corn salad and then we have a beautiful potato salad all to go alongside my beautiful pulled pork. So I'm excited to see how it tastes. I'm sorry that got shaky so bad. I had a bug land on me. Cookies time, except there's no cookies at all. It's pretty good. I think it's brisket. I'm very picky about barbecue. And um, this is something I write out about, write home about. I don't even know if I get it again. If I wanted seconds, I'd probably get a hot dog. Um, but it's not bad, you know? It's, I think it's brisket on it, so that's pretty good. It's got a nice slaw on it, um, a little bit of sauce, and you can, of course, add more. So it's not bad. Not my favorite thing. I'm having a hard time with the potato salad because I had the Marceline Market potatoes this morning, and those were so good. And now that's all I'm thinking about, and these aren't them, and it's making me sad. It's a, it's a mayo-based potato salad. It doesn't have a lot of flavor. It needs salt. And I could go get salt and add that. The corn salad. It's hard to go wrong with corn. This kind of reminds me of a corn salsa, which is a part of my go-to Chipotle order. So I'm into it. And last, but certainly not least, probably, hopefully, the macaroni salad. I love a pasta salad. Oh, this is cheese. What a plot twist. That's my favorite thing on the plate. It's a pretty basic macaroni salad, but I mean, it's still delicious. And of course, all the food at Cookies is included with your stay on the wish. Um, just like on the boat, the only thing not included on the islands are like add-ons, alcohol, stuff like that. So, no, it's a good meal. I, I need this for uh, if I were out on the beach, but I don't think I'd pick it over anything else. This is the Keg and Compass, which is the ship's pub. It's got a little bit of a nautical 20,000 leagues under the sea octopus sort of theme. And I am here for a beer tasting, which is an upcharged offering um, that I booked as soon as I could yesterday. Or, whoa, like three days ago, but you know what I mean.
morning at Keg and Compass was fabulous. I really enjoyed it. Honestly, I've only been to the Bayou. I've stepped in a hyperspace lounge. I've stepped into the Rose. This one has been my favorite so far. It feels more casual. It feels less intense. And um, it's got beautiful detail. The carvings around the portholes. The ceiling has so many hidden secrets that my bartender actually said that they have not They have to have the guy who painted the ceiling come train them on the hidden secrets because there are so many hidden secrets up there. So that's it's just a super cool bar. It's very relaxing. The beer tasting was amazing. My bartender was so knowledgeable. So it was awesome. Um, my favorite bar, my favorite bar so far, but I kind of get, I'm getting the vibe that there's something for everybody here. Just off of the Grand Hall, you can find Nightingales. Nightingales is a piano bar here on The Wish. It's a beautiful mosaic in the grounds and beautiful decor inside. You can see that it is closed right now, but it was pretty busy earlier. Now I remember this is a media cruise. It's mostly adults. So after dinner, the lounge just got very busy. I'm not sure how well, that trend will stay once more families are around and adults have to keep an eye on their kids after nine. But for now, the lounges were extremely busy. I personally didn't get a chance to try any gills. However, one of my team members did. They tried the signature drink here. It comes in a bird-shaped glass. It is a beautiful passion fruit drink. It looks like a canary. I'm super jealous that I didn't get to try it, but she said it was awesome. She said it was a very good cocktail. Maybe not anything that she would crave again and again, but definitely very good for drinking it on the cruise. So. Nightingale's another one of the very solid lounge options here on The Wish. All right, finally, we have our last rotational dining. I'm headed into the Walt Disney Dining Room of 1923. This is a restaurant that is themed around, um, 1923 is the year that the Walt Disney Company was formed or founded. And this restaurant celebrates Disney animation, showing the process of animation with a Californian inspired menu. So I'm very excited. There's a Walt Disney dining room and a Roy Disney dining room and we are in the Walt Disney dining room. The first thing that I got here at 1923 is the Lillette experience. Now this is a wine sampler basically with Lillette Blanche, Lillette Rouge and Lillette uh, Rose. This is kind of a throwback to get you tasting all of this like French aperitif uh, before your meal. And it does actually come with a pairing of little bites, but I will say there's something interesting about this. So it comes with walnuts, some beautiful chunks of Parmesan cheese, and then mine came with M&Ms, which doesn't feel like it fits. I think it's supposed to be actual little morsels of chocolate. However, um, one of our servers did explain that there's a lot of shortages of things happening. They're still getting things ready ahead of the official guest cruises. Um, so that's why I did end up with M&Ms to match with my fancy wine. Nope, looks like a scary ghost. This is sweet and floral. And I don't think it has a lot of, like the, mostly what I'm tasting is sweetness and, and kind of like a, kind of, it's hard to get past the flavors of it just being like a little bit syrupy. Not necessarily in a bad way. If you like sweet wine, I think you'll like this. It's also very strong. The lead is strong, so I can definitely feel the burn of the alcohol. Um, I think this might in general, the Lillette experience might be better suited as an end of meal accompaniment. Time for the Lillette Rosé. Uh, Rosé is not my favorite, but I've never had the Lillette Rosé. Ooh, it smells really good. Very different flavor from the Rosé Blanc or Lillette Blanc Blanche. I think it's just as sweet, but it packs more of a punch flavor wise because it is, you know, a Rosé, which means it's brewed partially with red wine. So I think that the flavor is better here and it's cutting the sweetness a little more than with the white. It's still very strong also, but it's not having as much burn going down as the white was. So I think I like this one better. And Lillette Rouge. I knew this was going to be my favorite. It is a sweet red. Lillette is sweet across all three of these. But it's a sweet red. It is heavier and it has tannins in it, which I really like tannins. Um, so it's got kind of like a a weight to it when you drink it, but still sweet, a little fruity, floral, it's kind of on the line between fruity and floral. This is definitely my favorite, my favorite going from dark to light, which is also, actually no, because I don't like rosé. So pretty. That looks so fancy. Oh, wow. This is the fennel, Bartlett pear, and tatsua salad with manchego cheese, walnuts, and cherry dressing. It looks very light and beautiful. I'm excited to try it out. Salad, cheers. I was very right. It's definitely a super light appetizer, which is kind of what I prefer because I have a bad habit of eating too much of my good appetizer and ending up with no room for my entree. Um, 
I don't think this is for most people though. I like pear a lot, so I'm really liking these thinly sliced pears. But it's mostly just like a very fresh, like clean flavor to it. Nothing crazy special or anything like that. So I like this. I don't think it's probably the most popular meal on the menu. Um, and I, it's probably not the best for the most people. But if you like a lighter, fresher appetizer, this is a good way to go. Fry Bucket got the burrata. Yes, I got the burrata. It was very good. I uh, love the orange that comes on the plate. It had a little bit of char to it, which was nice. It paired really well together, the prosciutto with the burrata. Um, so it was a good appetizer. I would recommend it. For my entree, I got the torta jaloni pasta, which has prosecco cream, pancetta, shallots, mushrooms, and lemon thyme. That's really good. I really like the cream um, and the pancetta. If you don't like mushrooms, you're obviously not going to like this. Strong mushroom flavor, um, but very good. I'm a big, I'm a big pasta fan, um, as you can tell, because I ordered pasta also at Paolo's Steakhouse. Um, but it's very good. All right, so I went with the 1923 peppered filet mignon. I got it cooked medium rare, and it has buttered long green beans on it with smoked bacon, crushed fingerling potato hash, and pink pepper cafe au lait is the sauce, which sounds very interesting. All right, it looks like it's cooked pretty well, so I'm excited to try it out. I think that the <laughs> sauce is a little bit overwhelming for filet mignon. It's a very good sauce, though. It's got a lot of like really rich flavor, and the whole thing is very peppery because the filet mignon is black pepper and the sauce has pink peppercorn. So I'm getting a lot of pepper. I'm a really big pepper fan. I would not order this if you like tend to shy away from pepper, if you only do a little bit of pepper, because it's a lot of pepper. It's very peppery. I've said pepper so many times. It's also pretty chewy for a flaming one. I think it's cooked well. It's got a good like pink center. It maybe could have gone a little, it maybe went a little too long for medium rare. Um, it's just not my favorite filet mignon I've ever had. I chewed for a long time, and I like filet mignon when it cuts like butter. I had to saw through this. Um, let's see how long the potatoes are. Those are good. You can taste that it's fingerling potatoes that made this mash, and it's not, it's, it's, it's salted, right? I feel like I could use more butter, honestly. But put in everything. I'm giving handed butter. Thank you. An assist. <laughs> Once again, running from place to place because we have a reservation at Hyperspace Lounge. Three reservations in a row. That's how you cover a cruise ship. Um, I will share my, uh, what did I, where did I just eat? I will share my 1923 thoughts right here via voiceover. 1923 really surprised me as my least favorite of the three rotational dining offerings. I was the most excited for this one because as an adult, as a Disney fan, getting to see that almost a thousand different prop pieces, um, a restaurant with a Walt and Roy themed dining room. The table setting was beautiful. I was very, very excited for this spot, but the food was just a little lackluster for me. I did order the filet mignon, which I think was actually a pretty good composed dish. My favorite thing about it was that pepper sauce that went along with the pepper on the actual steak. It was just super peppery and I'm a pepper fan. However, the filet mignon was pretty chewy for a filet mignon. I mean, that's supposed to be a prime cut of meat and it certainly didn't come off like that. Uh, the Lillette experience I had was nice, but it was nothing that I would write home about. Um, I honestly enjoyed the food over at Worlds of Marvel and Arendell more. So I still liked 1923. It was still a delightful evening, I think. And stepping in there to see the theming is a must. I think for me, if I needed to give up one of my rotational dining evenings to book one of the adult-only dining experiences at Enchante or Palo Steakhouse, I would give up 1923 and then I would make a point to snag an a la carte breakfast or lunch in there since they did offer breakfast and lunch in 1923 on several mornings of my cruise. So now I am finally on the way to Hyperspace Lounge. I'm super excited. Obviously this has been the most popular lounge on the ship. It's been full. Well, reservations have been full. I don't know if the room has been full. And so we're headed inside. This is of course a Star Wars themed lounge. It's super cool in here. So this lounge is themed after um, a ship named Solo, a Star Wars story. Um, I think it's not Din Djarin, that's a Mandalorian. Hold on. Dryden Boss. This is based off of Dryden Boss's ship. Uh, because, you know, it can't be bought too grungy in here. This is supposed to be a luxury experience, a fancy experience. So they have to go with a fancier ship like Dryden Boss's. I ordered a cocktail that sounds pretty wild. This is the pickled Minoc from the asteroid belt. It says, proudly serving to any party goer eager to fuel up. And it's made with Codigo 1530 artisanal mezcal, Cointreau blood orange, and Bailey's salted caramel. 
So that's an interesting combination. We'll see how it goes. This is a very interesting drink. I think it makes value. It sounded like it wasn't going to be good. It's really good. It's got um, the smokiness from the mezcal, the orange from the Contrao, and the salt and caramel. And all together, it's making a very strong drink. But none of the flavors are overwhelming. Hold on, we're going to hyperspace. Yeah, yeah. So none of the flavors are overwhelming. It's just, it kind of like, the best how best the salted caramel. The coin show rounds it all out. And the, um, all the caramel has the best. This is a frozen themed restaurant complete with appearances from Lana and Elsa, uh, Kristoff, Olaf, um, and even the first ever appearance on a Disney cruise ship of Oaken. Woohoo! Big summer blog! I'm so excited to head in and get eating. The menu is inspired by Norwegian cuisine, so um, I like pickled things. I haven't eaten a lot of Norwegian cuisine, but we'll see how it tastes. I am Oaken, and I'm pleased to be welcoming you to Arendelle to celebrate the engagement of our most worthy and wonderful queen, Anna of Arendelle. Fry Bucket, what did you think of the show so far? Um, it's amazing. <laughs> so yes, I am at dinner with my producer, Fry Bucket, but I'm also here with some of our friends from DFB, Cassie. Hello. What did you think of the show so far? I got chills whenever Anna and Kristoff hugged, so that's where I'm at mentally. So we're having a great time so far. If, I've heard some people say that they don't really like it because it feels like it is made for kids or people who love Frozen and that's not them. And so it might not be your favorite. It's still enjoyable. We'll see how the food st stands up because it's Norwegian inspired. So it might be some surprising eats. For my drink, I got the Frozen Fractals, which is Ciroc, Peach, Moet, and Chandon Ice. It is, I got it because my server said it's gorgeous and you have to get it. And she was not wrong. I don't know if the camera's really doing it justice, but it has this beautiful glittery to it. And I mean, you look at the color. And Fry Bucket, what did you get? I got the Worth Melting For. It's non-alcoholic. It is passion fruit, coconut, and pineapple. Um, it tastes really, really good. This is a great option for kiddos if they want a fun drink at dinner. Um, and I would say it's a great choice. Nice. Cheers. <laughs> I'm definitely tasting the Syrah. Um, it's got that like citrusy flavor to it, kind of fruity. Um, it's got a pretty bitter aftertaste, which I like because it's sweet on first taste, and the bitter aftertaste kind of saves it. And then also it's like so pretty that I want to swim in it, but I shouldn't and couldn't do that, so I just had to drink it. Is it supposed to be melted Olaf? I, <laughs> I mean, it's called worth melting for. Does that mean that you are worth melting for? Does it mean I'm worth well, melting for? Or we're all worth melting for. I, I won't go by myself, although. So you're just trying to pot off your Olaf murder to everybody else, too. Uh, no, he's here. We just saw him. He's here. I don't this see him not, right now, though. This is not Olaf. He's going to come back out. He's going to come back out, I promise. <laughs> Cassie has informed me that she feels left out, so she's going to describe her Shirley Temple now. So I don't recall. Quincy's spreading, spreading a false narrative. I don't feel left out, but I do want to say my Shirley Temple is delightful. They're Sprite, they're cherry flavoring. The only thing that can make this better is some physical cherries, and I sincerely hope to see Olaf again. That would help so the lack of cherries. So that we all know that Fry Bucket didn't kill him. I feel like very suspicious of Fry Bucket. Yeah. Is this Fry Bucket speaking now That's for myself? Olaf is here. He's in the dining room, okay? I did not let him see anything. Listen, where'd he go? Hold on. One moment. See, there he is. He's over there on the other side of the room. Probably an imposter. All right, Arendelle, final thoughts. Um, I actually really enjoyed the food here and I really enjoyed the show. It was actually my favorite rotational dinner of all three. I had the sea bass. I thought it was excellent. I talked to many people who also had the sea bass and thought it was excellent. So it was very good sea bass. Obviously you don't like fish. You're not gonna like the sea bass, but the food in general was 
interesting. It had a Norwegian flair, so it's gonna be a little bit foreign to American flavor palettes, but it was still really delicious. I loved everything we had here. I had chilled asparagus for my appetizer that was awesome. And then you also get to see Anna, Elsa, Kristoff, Olaf in a new way that he's never been seen before, and Oaken, never been seen before. I keep hearing around the ship people just going, woohoo, woohoo, big summer blowout, woohoo, big summer blowout. I, my producer's dancing to the, and you can just sing all these songs you love from Frozen. I'm an adult. It's definitely geared more towards little kiddos who love Frozen, but as an adult who loves Frozen, it was amazing for me. My favorite of the rotational dinners, and I thought the food was awesome too. Um, maybe tied with Marvel depending on your taste, but for me, Frozen went all the way. Good job, Arendelle. I'll keep you around. Ooh, I'm full just thinking about all that food. If you like this video, go ahead and like and subscribe, and now go check out our overview of the Disney Wish ship. See you there!